Christina, do you think there's an afterlife? I definitely think there is an afterlife. And then you go back into life when uh when there's a new birth, you become that their baby. Jason, what do you think happens after someone dies? Uh, I don't know. You ever think about it? Yeah, a lot. Are you afraid of dying? No. Like, uh, I'm afraid of, like, physically dying, like, if there's pain involved, yeah, but, like, the after, uh, who knows? Well, you think hell exists? Probably not. You use the word probably, so there's a possibility hell could be there? Sure, yeah. I do believe there is a superior force, there is a superior uh, being. So who would go to hell? I don't know. It'd be bad people. Yeah, I guess. Do you believe in God's existence? Uh, maybe, I don't know. You ever think about that? Yeah, a lot. All these wonderful things around us, how did it get here? Obviously, there's a creator. I don't know about a creator, so I don't think it's obvious. Seems like it's a lot of time takes place and then things kind of just happen. Time is the magic ingredient. If you left your garage empty for a million years, could a Mercedes evolve from nothing? And you can see the kindness of God in puppies and kittens and birds and trees and flowers and fruits and seasons. All these things show us that God is good and kind. But at the same time, there's something wrong on the earth. There's tornadoes and floods and hurricanes and cancer and disease, and pain and death. And that shows us that we live in a fallen creation. Would it evolve into something that's got intelligent design? A Mercedes from nothing. You think a Mercedes has intelligent design? Oh yeah, you try and make one. You wouldn't know where to start. Yeah, I guess not. You're talking about like Christian God, right? Like a, like a Jesus and all that stuff? No, no, I'm saying there's, there's one creator. It's obvious through design and, and everything from the atom through the universe. You've got an intuitive knowledge of God via your conscience. Conscience means with knowledge. Are you going to go to heaven when you die, do you think? Are you a good person? I am just as good as I am as bad. How many lies do you think you've told in your life? So many, I can't even count them. You've lied and stolen? Uh, yes, I have done that. Do you use God's name in vain? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's called blasphemy. And Jesus said, if you look at a woman and lust for her, you commit adultery with her in your heart. Have you ever done that? Yes, multiple times. And what about you? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, Lorraine, I'm not judging you, but you've just told me you're a lying thief, a blasphemer, and an adulterer at heart. That's four of the Ten Commandments. If God judges you by the commandments on Judgment Day, do you think you'd be innocent or guilty? Guilty. Heaven or hell? Probably hell, I guess, by the rules. Now, does that concern you? No. Does it concern you? No. You don't love your life? I do, to a certain extent. Heaven or hell? Um, going to God. Because I think as my father, he loves me regardless, you know, as I love my kids. But the Bible says this, when we sin against God, we stir up his wrath. And every time we sin, his wrath gets greater. In fact, the scriptures say we're enemies of God in our mind through wicked works. And that's evidenced by the fact we use his name as a cuss word. In blasphemy, we use it in vain. So if you die in your sins, you'll be guilty. And the scriptures say you'll end up in hell. And I'd hate that to happen to you. Do you know what familiarity breeds contempt means? No. I can... No, I don't. It means we take certain things for granted where we don't even appreciate them. That's really what it means. We're so familiar with them, like the blue sky, and it's just there, so what? The sun shines, it's just there, so we don't even think about it. But the thing we take for granted most is our lives, how precious they are. I mean, would you sell one of your eyes for a million dollars? No. Would you sell them both for a hundred million? No. See how precious your eyes are to you? And yet your soul is what looks out those eyes. So if your eyes are without price, they're so precious, how much is your life worth, your soul? Jesus said, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? So guys, your life is so precious and it horrifies me to think that you guys could end up in hell if you die in your sins. Do you know what God did for guilty sinners so we wouldn't have to go to hell? God did something wonderful. Do you know what he did? What he did? No. Uh, Saint Jesus is only begotten Son, that where believe them shall not perish, have everlasting life. Yeah, God became a human being 2,000 years ago to suffer on a cross. Did you know that? Oh, I heard the story, yeah. yeah. I heard the story too, but did you know this? You and I broke God's law, Jesus came and paid the fine. If you're in court and someone pays the fine, even if you're guilty, the judge can let you go. You can say, Lorena's guilty, but someone's paid a fine, she's out of here. Well, God can dismiss your case, forgive your sins, commute your death sentence, let you live forever because of that death on the cross 2,000 years ago, because of his death and resurrection. What you guys have to do is repent of your sins. Don't confess them to a priest. Just go to God and say, I've sinned against you. I'm worthy of hell. 
If you expose my secret sins, my sexual imaginations, my looking at pornography, my lying and stealing and blasphemy, I'm in big trouble on Judgment Day because you're perfect and holy. Say, God, forgive me. And then trust in Jesus like you trust a parachute. At the moment, you're unsaved, you're heading for hell, but if you'll repent and trust in Jesus, God will give you everlasting life as a free gift. The word gospel means good news and it's the greatest news you could ever hope to hear. Because we're all afraid of death. Well, God says, I'll take death off you and give you everlasting life as a free gift. Now, do you think I'm telling the truth? I believe you're saying your truth. No. Do you believe I'm telling the truth? Really quick, if you're enjoying this video, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our YouTube channel where we post two new encouraging videos every single day. We also have many more resources available on livingwaters.com. Thank you so much. I believe you believe is the truth. And what do you believe? That's what matters. Uh... You know, we tend to overlook the power of belief. If you're walking along a path and you believe there's a landmine right in front of you, you'll go around it. If you don't believe, you'll walk right onto it. So your beliefs will govern your direction, the direction you take. And if you believe you're a sinner and that Christ died for you, you'll repent of your sins, trust in Jesus, and that will govern your eternity. So beliefs govern your decisions, and they can govern your destiny. So I'm just saying, guys, believe the gospel. Believe what I'm saying is true, because I wouldn't lie to you. This is so important. Does that make sense? Yeah. It makes sense to you? Oh, yeah, it makes sense, yeah. Guys, I appreciate you listening to me. I know that, <laughs> Jason, you'd be called an unbeliever, a bit of a skeptic. But I want you to consider what I'm talking about. Consider my motives. I'm saying this because I love you. And the most important thing is your life, and you don't want to lose it. Okay? You going to think about this? Yeah, I'll think about it. So will you at least think about what we talked about? Oh, definitely. No, and I, and I you know, think about it a lot. Regardless of my, my sins, you know, I, I can feel God loves me. You know, he gives me so many things every, every single da day. I can feel his love, you know, and I can feel like he's like, okay, you're not, you know, my, you know, you're not doing or having the best behavior, but, you know, I still love you. You know, I'm, I'm well, here. Well, return his love by obeying his word, and he commands you to repent. God commands all men everywhere to repent. That's the whole of humanity. So if you're aware of God's love, show your love for him by obedience to his command to turn from your sins and trust in the Savior. Does that make sense? Totally, yes. Both of these young men had been battling thoughts of suicide, so I gave each of them a copy of my book, How to Battle Depression and Suicidal Thoughts, which incidentally has been republished under the title, The Final Curtain. Jason immediately began to read the book, and Anthony went back to smoking dope.